Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another fantastic episode of Let's Play Some Stormblood over here. Yeah, we kind of had a hard time last time. Um, yeah. L let's let's not relive that experience again. I, I really don't like when people I'm protecting die, and I totally get my butt handed to me, and... Ugh. This is just straight up depressing and all, guys. What are we gonna do now? Everything's all in ruins and... No, we came here to kick the Empire off the soil and... Yeah. This is not looking too good. Yeah, we'll have time to think about later when, you know, we've recovered and realized, oh god, we're actually still breathing. So it's looking like, uh, we beat our friends here. Elise, how you doing? Uh, did you did you see her off and off? For for once, it was not bloodless carnage. She's in pretty bad shape. Now, while I can understand why that little detail really hits Lise, at the same time, a lot of the people in the Garlean army are conscripts from Were other Were it nations. not for the swift actions of the Scions and the Alliance, many more would have died. You risked your lives to save ours, and for that we thank you. There is no need for thanks. We are allies, are we not? Aye, just so. Let us not dwell on this tragedy, but look to the future. The future? I'm sorry, General, but there is no future for us. We've lost too many. Gods, I can still see Mefrid with that woman standing over him. <sighs> They've ripped the heart out of us, General. They've broken us. Our fight is over. No, no, just you wait one damn second. I did not come all the way over here, make a deal with you, and act as intermediate for the alliance for you to just give the heck up. No. Master Kemp, please. I'll always hate them with every fiber of my being. For what they took from us then and now. Our homeland, our freedom, our bloody children. You mean the Skulls? The youths who fight for Xenos? Crania Lupi, the Black Wolf's legacy and our shame. 
a unit made up of children born to Alamegan dignitaries who came of age during the occupation. Sons and daughters of Gia Abania, raised to be proud citizens of the Empire, with all the rights and responsibilities that entails. It'd be easy to curse them and call them traitors, but they're our children. Our flesh and blood. If the only way to forge the future we want is to cut down our own, then... Then what was it all for? Narco? What will you say to the families of the fallen? To the mothers, and the widows, and the orphans? Will you tell them it was all for nothing? Listen to the girl. We dare not suffer our comrades' sacrifices to have been in vain. Now is the time to steal our resolve and press on, painful though it may be. And when Xenos comes back with his army, what then? This isn't the first time, you know. You'll be hard-pressed to find men brave or stupid enough to face him again. I still can't believe how strong he was. He humiliated us back there. The Warrior of Light included. God help us if he's next in line to the Garlean throne. Yeah, yeah let's, let's not talk about that. That was, that was quite embarrassing for me. <laughs> Loth though I am to say it, we should not be surprised. Before succeeding Van Bailsar in Alamigo, Xenos led the Imperial Army to Doma, where he crushed the rebellion utterly. As a matter of fact, Doma remains in his charge to this day. Suffice it to say, Varus is heir is a peerless warrior and an accomplished general. The question is, how are we to contend with such a foe? <laughs> well, to put it simply, we have one legatus overseeing two provinces a world apart. I say we divide and conquer. We kindle the flames of revolution in Doma once more, thereby forcing Xenos to fight a war on two fronts. For that, there would need to be someone left to fight on this front by the time you got back. Look, I'll not deny the plan as promise. And I feel for our brothers and sisters in Doma, truly I do. But I fear we lack the strength to see it through. Have faith in your people, Master Kemp. Them and the Scions. Hold fast, rebuild, and when all is in place, we shall defeat Xenos together. If you're going to Doma, I'm coming too. I want to help our friends there, and make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Give us the time we need, and we will give you something far greater. Very well. For all you have done for us, we will fight on. But be swift, comrades. Al amigo has suffered enough. Now, one thing I actually wish they had brought up in part of that conversation, because we did witness it in an Echo Vision, is remember what Thornton said to Amaric about what are you going to tell, you know, the the wives and you know that their sons all died in vain and the, and the reason that he was continuing to perpetuate the Dragon Song War is because every archbishop that had come before him also came to that same same conclusion. Like you you just had, you know, everyone just kept pressing on and fighting on it's like do you want to be the one to tell to everyone that it's really all for nothing in the end nobody wants to be in that position i'm not saying it's right but i kind of i kind of wish they they would have harkened back to that in in some sort of manner but anyway back to what i was saying before the cutscene started i can understand lisa's position about you know how she feels it wasn't it wasn't a Garlean that cut down Mefford, it was a fellow Alamegan. But we're going to eventually be seeing a bit more of that because it is well known that most of the cannon fodder in, in the Garlean army 
isn't actually high-ranking Garlean citizens. It's conscripts from other nations. That's what they do. So, like, I get where she's coming from from a personal standpoint, but that's just one of the, th the realities that we are gonna have to ju have to just deal with. And it is a hard decision, you know, to make. It's like, do 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 you choose your enemies based on, you know, where they were born or which side they stand with? And and there there's no there's no easy answer for that because you you feel more kinship to to someone that you share something in common with, that you share a homeland with, that sometimes it can be hard to separate that from the ideas someone upholds during their actual life, you know, like, what, what, what is more important to you, your heritage or what you, what you do with your life? And, and I would go with more of the latter. Now, in this case, it's a bit more complicated because, you know, the conscripts in the army, they, they didn't choose that. It's, it's basically you fight for us or we'll kill you and murder you and your family and stuff like that. Like, it's not a very, it's not an easy choice to make on that other end. Either it's it's a really really complicated and, and messy situation overall, but yeah, like I kind of wish they they would they would touch up a little bit and bring kind of remind people of of this and not just bring it break it down into simple terms of. She's, she's Ella Megan, oh my god, how dare, you know, she ever do this and whatnot. And it's really a lot more complicated and, and messy than that, you know? But basically, it also it also brings out a part of her, char her character development that I really don't think should be as prevalent as it is, because the game will constantly, constantly keep reminding you that she is Alamegan, even though she was not she was born here, but she was not raised here. Like it is an entirely different situation for her than it is for Monago or Conrad, who did grow up in this, you know, this area, who who do have to witness this more often and deal with the messiness of the situation. Lisa has been mostly removed from that, so I can understand why this is a shock and why this bothers her so much on a personal level. But I think the story makes a bit too much of a emphasis in the wrong place about it. If that makes any sense. I know I'm really kind of rambling on about these issues, but I, I just feel they they do play an important role in Lisa's character development, but I think it as a result it ends up taking it in a wrong direction. You know what, Afano? That's a very good point. Why don't we remind people of this more damn often? Dude, friggin' senior citizen saved the realm from frickin' Armageddon. Like, come on. Yep, you'll be fine, Minago. You'll be fine. You know, I haven't started that quest yet, so, uh, game, that, that, that dialogue option should not be there yet. See, 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 now it should show up after I've seen this cutscene. Game, you are silly. You're not funny. Yeah, we haven't kept Atira up with, a, like, any of this that has happened. The poor girl. She's probably worried sick about us.
Well, Cry, you could have come over here and been part of this conversation from the start, you know, like... He's bringing up the point we do need someone to say, you know, had you given him 30 seconds, he may have actually turned around and directly asked you. Like, he wants to make this a group decision here. Yes. So, uh, where, where is our involved in, uh, in all the, uh, the injured, huh? Like, really? Can, can I say bye to him? Can, can I make sure that, that he did indeed get everyone to safety? I mean, Monago's here, and, well, she was here, anyway. And she's fine, so we can assume yes, but, um, I really wish you, you could have seen a bit more of him. Because, like I said before, you are gonna, we are gonna be seeing a bit more of him throughout this expansion, but... They limit his screen time more than I would like they would. But yeah, it's it's not like he's just some, you know, random guy who we occasionally ally with. He's a member of the Silence of the Seventh Dawn. He has the Echo. Why do we not use him in the plot way more often? Like, he should be super important. Why is it only the Charlayan Scions that, and, and Tataru that get really any sort of focus? Like... He really needed much more of a day in the limelight, and way sooner. Like, he totally, totally needs it and deserves it. Especially since he is Alamegan himself. Like, he's got a personal stake in, in, in this whole this whole situation. And it's, it's really disappointing how long it will take them to make him a pivotal part of the story. So, hello friends, where is Tataru? Well, at least we know we actually called everybody else. So, you changed the flags. Or we use a crappy little ship. Like, remember with Leviathan, we, like, we literally tied two ships together to make a new one? Like, I know, I know in that situation, that, that's hardly gonna get across the sea, but, but can, can we not just take a ship and modify it a bit to, uh, make them escape their notice? Or can we, like, mark it as, like, a plague ship or something like that? Yeah, I'm, I'm with her, like... Pu putting aside the pirate issue for a moment, I love how... We're the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, okay? We've saved the realm countless times, and the best we can do is fucking pirates. Are you kidding me? Oh, shut your face. All right. No, no, no. We, we are not going back to the arrogant little twerp you were. No. No, no, no.
Wow, he is just not happy about this at all. I love how Tataru just like waves there. <laughs> so in case that wasn't abundantly clear. Yeah, we're blackmailing him. Touche, Tataru. Touche. You are the best. Yeah, at least you're not the brightest bulb in the box, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the Admiral would- Admiral will not be very happy if he actually did that, so... yeah. I mean, like- like what Alphino said earlier about we can't exactly be fl be sailing across the ocean under Alliance colors. That- that- that is suicide. And there is very much indeed a point to that. Don't get me wrong. Like, I still think, you know, there are ways around that. Like, we don't have to fly sail under- in, if under Alliance colors. That's a choice we have a say in, but... Um... So yeah, Alphino was in on the game too, even though, uh... He was gonna be more tactful about it, just in case you missed that little smirk and why he was... ...temporarily going back to the twerp he once was. All just an act. Would've been nice if you, like, informed your sister of this beforehand to, you know, not... ...unintentionally, maybe accidentally piss him off. Well, it's too bad Yugiri and Gosetsu already left, because they would have been invaluable sources of information here. Whoops. But really, Alphanote, no, really? You're making Alize go back and talk to Uriage? Really? Do you really think that's a good idea? Did, did, did you miss what happened like a month or so ago where, uh... Yeah, she thought he might have betrayed them and is still a little upset at him about that whole ordeal. Even if she understands why he did it. Yeah, she's not happy with him right now. I don't, I don't think putting them in the same room together is going to be the greatest of ideas. Hey girl, what you doing out here? Okay. Let's say hello to the Doma children for me, okay? Alright, introduce yourself. Be nice. They're my buddies. They got my back. Sup, homie?
Yes. Please do that. I mean, we gotta liberate them first from the Empire, but... Okay. Cool. Glad everything is taken care of. Where is Alien? Yeah, we all knew how that ended up. So here's where we actually find out that it was Xenos specifically that put down that rebellion. I don't think that was revealed at the time. Yeah, tell me about your home. Oh, okay. Sadly, that's not specific information that I don't think- that I think is going to be helpful with us putting down the Empire, but it is nice to know what kind of land we're going into. And a kind of information is always of some use. Give us at least a picture to put into our minds among the journey- along with the journey, you know? Or at least you have any luck. Wow, you've been quite busy while I talk to like three people. Wow. Do I have to go bring out the mom voice on the children? That was not very nice of them to do that to you, Elise. Hey, it's important to learn etiquette and customs if we're, you know, just like we did with the Alamegan resistance. We can't just go barging in and be like, yep, we're here to kick the Empire off your soil. Like, I, I know I made a big deal about that when, when we, when we, when we go into to Garabanya about, you know, like, hey, we're, we're here to help. Do you want our damn help or not? But at the same time, it's a completely different world over there. Like, they're not going to trust a bunch of foreigners and be like, we can't just go over there and be like, hey, we're here to kick the Empire off your soil and split their forces, you know, to better our goals on both ends. And they're going to be like, who the friggin' hell are you, you know? Um... So by learning some of their customs, we can more easily, you know, gain gain their trust and their confidence. Plus, if we have to eat with sticks, you know, that's that's going to be a problem come come lunchtime if we don't know, you know, with what utensils we need to eat our food with, you know? What's up guys? I'm ready. Oh, does that mean you made us lots and lots of lunches? Yay! But but did you bring the pillows with chocoba down? Nope, nothing left undone. Just want to make sure that you guys don't have any extra dialogue.
twelve be praised. Full sure was I that I had come too late. Oh, hi. You know, considering one of them was just talking to you, uh... If you wanted to come, why did you not just come to the docks with her? You're silly. Rionge! Tell me you haven't come all this way just to see us off. <laughs> Nay, my lady. Ere you quit these shores for eastern climes, I wished to share some words of seeming import. Look ye where the sun doth rise. See crimson embers, darkening skies. Look ye where the sun doth fall. See azure lost amidst the squall. Okay, can you write that down for me? Well, that sounds suitably foreboding. Another one of your prophecies, I presume? Of far eastern origin, aye. It is mine earnest hope that this ancient wisdom may serve to guide you on your journey. For what dangers lie in wait for you upon those distant shores are yet beyond my knowing. Oh, a parting gift befitting your roundabout ways. Thank you. I have more than words for you, my lady. What? It's beautiful. Is it for me? No, it's for your brother. Of course it's for you. Oh my god, girl. Though undeniably powerful, your ethereal blade taxeth you greatly in the wielding. Not so this rapier, which shall serve you just as well against all but the most formidable foe. Impressive. It feels as though it's attuned to my ether. I shall treasure it. Honored guests, say your farewells, for the moment of our parting draws nigh. A fair wind blows, and I mean to follow it. Now oh, that was a bit flowery. You should have just said, get your ass on the ship. That would work too. It would seem our ship is set to sail. Pray give my regards to Thancred and the others. And take care. So I know they wanted to show that on screen, but... She literally just went and talked to him. That's where she was while we were in Revenant's Toll with Lees. It, it just seems a bit silly. Like, they, they didn't quite think that through about... And it's like, he, he like runs to see them off and to give her this gift when he literally just saw her like 20 minutes before that. You know? But it would seem she's not quite as mad at him anymore, so that's good. So, is anyone seasick yet? A fine day, is it not? Fair winds and following seas. The misery is enjoying herself. Nevertheless, it would not do for you to spend the entirety of our voyage above deck. Let me show you to your quarters. I love how the twins' feet don't touch the floor. I can relate. Ah, is it supposed to do that? Not under normal circumstances. Captain! 
You need it on deck. Something queer as a foot. The winds died down, the waters went still, and all of a sudden, we were dragged off course. Dragged? By what? Can't rightly say, sir. But some of the lads are muttering about seeing things in the water. Things that shouldn't be there. Okay. Oh, for the love of... If you will excuse me a moment. Actually, might I persuade you to join me? Loath though I am to admit it, I have a bad feeling about this. Hmm, okay. Wait, 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 wait a second. It's 8.40 in the morning and it's suddenly really dark out here. I, 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 I can't even see anything. Although I find it funny, you know, that, you know, they say the winds have stopped and yet the weather is windy. Oh, snap. She got you there, son. Well, not much else we can do, so... Yeah, she is just not having any of this. Like, I just absolutely just- just love this, that- that... She's like, oh my god, like, I'm on a ship with freaking pirates and, like... She is just not happy about this at all, and she is making, you know, sparing no effort to make that abundantly clear at every opportunity. So we finally have our first dungeon, the Siren Song Sea. But first, we're gonna talk to everybody. Oh, I'm sure she would, because her no-nonsense-for-bullcrap attitude definitely would be an asset in your line of work, but yeah. Suspiciously specific denial there, Alpha Now. <laughs> well, that explains that. Friend player. Never mind. Carry on. I don't think there's anybody else on deck. Um. I don't know if we can go back and talk to Tataru. I've never actually tried. Or maybe not. <laughs> mm. 
Noticed it as soon as I clicked that dialog box. I've never... <laughs> oh, that's great. That is, that, that is great. Like, I know that exists, obviously, because they want you to be able to actually, you know, do something in game when, when you're waiting on the dungeon queue, but... Oh, that's a great way to lampshade that there. So I guess we can't talk to Tataru. Oh, well. No, no big deal. But that's going to be it for today's episode. We've gone on quite long enough. But thank you for watching, friends. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gather some of my own friends to tackle the Siren Song Sea next time. I will see you all then. <laughs>